Let's push further into the dig site. Just as Dugan said, it looks like they haven't turned up anything. What makes you say that? I can tell from the exposed strata here. See? Actually, your father is quite the geology expert. <laughs> Luke! My father! Really? He's that big of a nerd? Clark excelled at identifying organisms in strata such as this. He never told you about that. Why not? My father's been so busy with the town that we haven't spoken much recently. It doesn't help that I've been a huge jerk to him. He seems like a different person since he became the mayor. I think maybe my mom left because she couldn't deal with him anymore. But he's not even my dad. What if the Spectre kidnapped my real dad? Luke, that is highly doubtful. Although I also thought that Clark was acting strangely. The Spectre's controlling him. When did you notice this change in your father? When he became mayor, right before the Spectre appeared. I'm sure Clark will return to his old self once we sort out this case, but I need your help. We'll get to the bottom of this. You believe me, don't you, Luke? Of course I do, Mr. Layton. Good. When Emmy returns, we will speak with your father. Now, we may be a little early, but let's head for the library. You think Emmy is back by now? If she is not, then we can look at some of the archived newspapers. Maybe we can find something useful. I see. You know where the library is, don't you? It's east of the crossroads. Of course I know. I kind of don't, so thank you. Let's go. But first, dynamite. Ha! <laughs> well, I didn't think that was on. Dugan can't be using dynamite to unearth the Golden Garden. That's not a good way to conduct an archaeological dig, is it? It is not. I certainly hope the Golden Garden is somewhere else. Or we just destroyed it. <laughs> We're just blowing the crap out of it. Okay. Oh, something's in here. You found a new item. Silver ore. Yeah. This one seems quite large. Why don't you have a look, Luke? Um, it's really dark. And there's a puzzle in one of these holes. I knew there would be. Ah, the smell of a fresh dig. It has been quite a while. I thought you explored places like this all the time, Mr. Layton. Climbing in there in your nice suit and top hat. It's good for digging. Unfortunately, no. I'm usually holed up in my study these days and grading papers. Ugh. But enough of that. Perhaps you can take a look at this puzzle that I just found inside this hole. Sorting Artifacts An archaeologist shows you some ancient runes on a dig in Mist Hallery. These runes were divided into two groups, but I seem to have mixed them up. Can you sort the runes into the correct group? Only the top left rune cannot be moved. Okay. Um... Separate the relics and tap the icon. So these... These are a little bit gibberishy to me. Uh, let's see. So... This looks kind of like a pear. This one. This looks kind of like a pineapple. This looks kind of like a face. This looks like, I don't know, this looks like a kite? This looks like an eyeball? This looks... For some reason this makes me think of a bicycle? And this one makes me think of like a, like a plant or something. What am I supposed to do to actually differentiate these things? Hmm. What do these runes have in common? I get the feeling it's not the shapes. Actually. Plants and non-plants? I don't think... I mean, they're vaguely planty, but I don't think that's enough. 
Because, I mean, if we did that, that would just be... Like, basically that. Right? That would basically be plants and non-plants. But there's something else. Either about the shapes that they use... I mean, they're all kind of abstract. Or, like, they're, they're vaguely representational, but kind of non-representational. I wonder if it has something to do with the way that they're drawn... Or that has to do with just, like... Let's try plants and non-plants. Maybe. We've got... Let's try it. Let's see what happens. How about this? Huh? Okay. Some puzzles are simply impossible. Alright, let's try again. Ugh. Even numbers of picarats. Ugh. Ugh. Let's see. They can be drawn in a single stroke? Well... This one definitely can't, because it's not connected. That You have to pick up your pen to do that one. Are there any others that have things that are completely detached? Um, everything else at least crosses over at least once. Like this, like, pepper right here is kind of like that. <clears throat> I guess you have the difficulty that if you have this shape, then you're probably going to pick up your pin and draw straight across. But I would think the same thing with this too, that you would draw that and then do a circle and then do a circle. These are definitely the busiest shapes, and these are the simplest shapes on the left. So maybe it's just the number of lines? Because looking at them, this is like two, this is like two shapes, this is like three shapes, and these all have a ton. These all have a crap ton of shapes. So maybe just going by simplicity, I kind of like these groupings. Let's try just going for just raw complexity right. of the of the shapes. That was right. That puzzle wasn't so hard. I don't fully understand this puzzle clearly, apparently, but I'll take it. Um. Oh, the runes are divided into two groups. The ones on the left can be written in one pen stroke without lifting the pen or retracing the line, and the ones on the right can't. Man, that is re this middle one. That's some crap. That is, you would totally retrace lines to draw that symbol. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. No. That's a bunch of garbage. That's a big pile of, that's a big pile of tasty garbage. You and my dad were best friends, huh? What was he like back then? Well, Clark was a very hardworking student, always on time and incredibly diligent. He was boring and kind of dumb. We hated him. He was a favorite with the faculty members, so they often assigned him particularly tricky tasks. We both often ended up falling asleep face first in our books. And despite all that, he always had time for his friends and family, but not you. I wish he was like that now. <laughs> I'm sorry you and your father have been having a difficult time lately. Once we get to the bottom of all of this, I'm sure things will go back to how they were before. I'm not sure I want them to. Do you think all the caves are connected? It's too dark to see anything. Coins? Coins. Alright, I think that's all for this. Huh. Let's go to the library. Maybe we can find Keats along the way, and he's gonna have a crap ton of puzzles. Oh, mouse, mouse! Mouse badge! Oh, that guy almost snuck away from me. Why wouldn't Luke want things to go back to normal? That's a good question. We have a police chief here who solves every case. He'll catch the Spectre soon. Of course, if he doesn't, then what are we paying taxes for? Huh? That would be nearly as bad as Mr. Bard gouging us on our rents. You know, 
Taxes go to a lot of things beyond having just a, a, a completely infallible police force. Things like continuously re- Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, the mouse! I want the mouse. I'm gonna go back and forth and see if I can draw the mouse out of hiding. The most fun part of any game. Is this mouse forever go- Oh, thank you, fish. Thank you, fish. Yeah! Alright! Mouse badge! I don't know what they do! But I'm happy to have gotten it. Where was Keats? I want Keats. Where are you, Keats? I'm not ready to go to... Oh, the library is technically over there. I kind of want I... Hmm. I know there's a Keats over by the black market, so maybe let's just go over there real quick. Oh, we... He won't let me go! Aww. Luke. Oh, there's a Keats outside the library! Yes! Meow. Meow. I don't have to go to the black market. Okay, let's fill some gaps in, in our missed puzzles. Black and white cats. Yeah. Let's just... Let's just... Let's just crank them out. Hopefully th these will be easier than the one we just did. You want to display your impressive collection of black and white cat paperweights on this 4x4 grid. You must fill every space, and no row or column can have more than two same-colored cats next to each other. The six cats currently on the grid must remain where they are. How can you fill the rest of the grid? Touch a space on the grid to place a cat, change its color, or remove it. Okay, so these have to be white, which means these two have to be black, which means this is basically a uh, Sudoku, but easier. These, oh shoot. That doesn't work because I can't have these two next to each other, and I can't have these two next to each other. Oh no, so that has to be black. Let's take these out. Okay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But that has to be white. No, or it does. Oh, jeez. Head scratch, head scratch, head scratch. Okay. No row or column can have more than two same colored cats next to each other. That's a problem. That's a real problem. Wait, no, I can do that! Oh yeah, they don't have to have more than two total, they just can't be next to each other. So that can be black. That has to be black. That has to be black. Right? I was thinking of that differently than it actually is. Um, does that look right to everybody? I think that's how you have to do it. I think that's the only way you can do it. And it makes a nice zigzag pattern. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. Aha! I love the thrill of a good solution. There was no rule about having an uneven number of black cats and white cats. Oh! Okay, book stacks. Book stacks. Were there other things that I just missed in all the books at the library? Someone left a ton of books on the table, and now these two librarians have the unpleasant task of shelving them all again. The librarians are trying to count all the books, but they're stacked so high that neither one can see them all. Using each librarian's point of view, work out how many books are on the table. Oh. Okay. So. Hmm. Memo. So if they're looking straight across, we know for a fact that there are two books here. There are probably... Oh. 
Okay, so this is flipped, and the color of the books are helping here. There are three books here, and there are five books here. Because this stack and this stack are the same stack. So here there are four books, which makes sense because you would not see them from behind the five. And this is also two books. So three plus five is eight, ten, twelve, sixteen. I believe there are sixteen books. This took some creative thinking. No puzzle is without an answer. The color of the books helped a lot there. Good eye! Knocking them out of the park! Light height. Wait, no, I wanna do I wanna do them in order. Give me that difficulty curve ramp up, please. Oh no, it's math! Alright, a single light hangs from a beam above the floor of this dilapidated warehouse. <sighs> There are no- there are two posts, both of which are a foot tall, separated by a distance of 15 feet. The light casts a three foot long shadow from the left post and a two foot long shadow from the right post. Figure out how high the light is hanging above the door. Uh... There are two posts, both of which are exactly a foot tall. The light casts a three foot shadow so we're basically making two triangles here, right? There's a three-foot shadow and a two-foot shadow. So this triangle is like that, and this triangle is like that. And we don't know exactly this measurement, but we can use this to figure it out, right? So since this is um, two feet, and this is three feet, then this one is 2x, and this one is 3x, for that to have there. So this entirety thing is 5x, which means that x equals three. So, by that logic, um, this is six feet, right? Wait, no, it's nine. No, yeah, no, it's right. I had it right the first time. Just kidding. This is 9 feet, and this is 6 feet, right? 9 plus 6, 15, yes. So, erase, 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 erase. That means that this total distance is 12 feet, and this total distance is 8 feet. It has to be simpler than this, but I've gunked it up with math shenanigans. Do you not like my math shenanigans? Math seems like the way to go. I feel like there's an algebra problem in here somewhere. Let's see, there are two posts. A single light hangs on the beam above the floor of the stop at a warehouse. The two posts with which are a foot tall. Oh, 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 oh. We know that this is one foot. Right? This is one foot. So that means that if this is three, and it goes up in a straight line, the ratio of it going is 1 to 3. Therefore, if this is 3 feet and this is 3 feet, then this would be 2 feet, this would be 3 feet, and this would be 4 feet. Right? And along those same lines, if this is 1 foot and this is 2 feet, then we would once again do 1, 1, this is 2, this is 2, this is 2, to make this 6 feet. Therefore, it's one, two, three, four feet tall. There's how we do it. We actually had to do a very, just, we just needed to chart the line and have it go up by the right ratio. And they meet in the middle. Ah! I had to reread it because I missed the one foot tall pole thing is what was important because that's what made the triangle actually work. Okay, input answer. It is four feet tall. Right? Yes? Making sure they weren't asking inches so that I had to convert to figure that out. You can't let a puzzle intimidate you. Yeah, basic graphing. You had to really think to get it put out the right way. Are we doing modern major general in the ch what the frig? X plus Y plus three, one, oh that, huh, that's kind of what I did, but they're explaining it really, really mathematically. Huh. 
Uh, okay. Let's do it. You have the job of cleaning a king's room in his palace. This king is quite meticulous and has declared that his room be cleaned in a very specific way. There are numbers written on some of the floor tiles that show the order in which the tiles should be cleaned. Starting from tile 1 and proceeding from tile to adjacent tile in the correct order, can you find a way to clean all of the tiles without repeating any? Wait, 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 what? There are numbers written that show the order in which from tile 1 and proceeding from tile... To adjacent tile in the correct order, can you find a way to clean all the tiles without repeating any? To avoid dirtying the newly cleaned floor, the last tile you clean must be next to the door. Where's the door? When you touch a tile, it's given a number. Start from the tile marked to the number 1. Okay, good, I can do it in here. Go over each tile in order to create a path of sequential numbers with the numbers already marked on the board. So is, is this the door? Over here? So if this is six, one, two, three, four, five, six, that has to be there. Let's see, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That has to be there. Um, basically, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Is that it? Some puzzles must be met directly. All right. A gentleman leaves no puzzle undone. Okay, that wasn't that bad. That was a nice little pattern. The cleaning the room in this pattern forms the Chinese character for the word king. I did not know that character. It seems that the king is keen on languages, puzzles, and clean floors. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. To the library. Wow. This is a special looking lady. Oh, something. I immediately found a rare tome. I suppose a bit of light fiction is a nice change now and again. One mi only mysteries for me. Thank you very much. Really, Luke? You don't read romance? Uh-oh, a, pu a plant puzzle! <laughs> Goosey! Goosey, what are you doing lurking down there? Goosey, no one likes you, Goosey! I wanted a quiet place to hide, so I thought the library would work. I will still stick out, don't I? Oh, I was trying to sandwich myself between the bookshelves, too. You can just sit in a quiet corner, out of sight. Luke, you don't know what it's like to stick out everywhere you go. That's Goosey! But I can live with it. Hey, would you like to try a puzzle? Sure, Goosey. Sure. Uh, 45 big rats. That's pretty tough. On a square piece of wood with 20 centimeters sides, a mysterious fellow has painted an interesting design using a brush that is 10 centimeters wide. This painter used only one type of paint, but it's quite magical. It starts off pink, as shown in example one. If the pink is painted over, it turns orange. Um, and if orange is painted over, it turns brown, as example three. With that in mind, how many brush strokes did it take to paint this design? I think two. Wait, no, it took... Hold on. You have a brush that is 10 centimeters wide. So... The first brush stroke would have to go completely down the middle and get one, two. From there, you would paint straight across again, and that would be brush stroke three. And then from here, you could just paint this. Assuming that that's exactly ten inches, this would be brush stroke four. Is it just four? I think that's the most efficient path you could possibly do to get it to look exactly like that. Oh, it can't go all the way across because this spot because of this spot in the middle. If it was if it was done in 4, they would have missed this design. So this has to be um 1 2 3 4 and then this is number five. 
That's so it has to be five. I forgot about this middle section there. Right? Does that seem accurate? I'm gonna try it. How about this? Yes. Okay. Good. Good. That was good. It. Good. I'm not crazy. One, two, three, four, five. So, pretty close. I wish his brush was actually to scale, but it's fine. Alright, magic paint. And moved. Huh. My granny says the library's so old that it even has books on the Legend of the Spectre. I still don't understand, though, Goosey. Why were you hiding in that tiny little gap? It looks so nice and cozy, I thought if I could flip in there, I wouldn't stick out at all. Well, it's ambitious, at least. Alright, wow, that is his butt wiggling in there. Well, that dictionary must have at least 4,000 pages. Ah, yes, I have that edition in my office. I read it regularly. Why wouldn't I? Is it weird to read the dictionary? That's how you know words, like apoplectic. Picture books are for babies! Get that out of here! <laughs> Many illustrated books tell beautiful stories for all ages. Luke, you idiot. Oh, hmm, I don't think I've seen these works before. Fascinating. Oh, that one looks interesting. Coins, 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 coins. Alright, I think that was three. That says, oh no, Goosey, no, Goosey. Don't take that always stick out like this because I won't! I'm not thinking anything, honest. No, we're just kidding, son. <laughs> That's goosey! Alright, let's talk to the librarian. The librarian. Welcome to the Miss Hallery Library. If you can't find a book, tell me. I know where all of them are. Yes, my sure name is Dewey Decimal. We were hoping to look at a few local newspapers. The newspapers are over in the corner. If you need an archived copy, I know where those are. I need a newspaper from the day that Mr. Bard passed away. I don't know where those are. Unless you've solved 50 puzzles. I'm sorry, but it's library policy. I've solved 50 puzzles. I solved 50 puzzles before breakfast. Give me that newspaper. And you have done so. Wonderful. Please wait a moment. Oh, oh, a puzzle gap, huh? I got 50 puzzles right here. 50 puzzles coming out of my hat. Sorry to keep you waiting. Is this what you're looking for? Yes, this is it. May I borrow it? Are you familiar with the concept of a library? <laughs> library humor. Go ahead, just b bring it back, please. Mmm. Very strange indeed. No mention of Bard's death in the newspaper. Well, that's no help. Perhaps not. How long should we wait for Emmy, Mr. Layton? Do you think she can even find the library? Would you really- it would it be in the newspaper the day he died? I would think that the obituaries tend to come like a day or two after somebody dies. So I don't know why you're looking for only that day. But I guess presume- oh, ho, oh, oh, how coincidence. Speak of the Emmy and there she is. What was that look? Emmy, I wasn't talking about how terrible you are. It's nice to see you. I don't think- I don't think that you two look. So, Luke, sorry I'm late, but I had trouble finding the big scary place with all the books. Oh, how was a woman ever going to find a big library? <laughs> I'm sorry, Yumi. I was just joking. Hysterical, Luke. You're really great. The children's books are over in the corner if you would like to look at some books that you hate. Like I hate you. Sorry, I kept you, Professor. Here are the materials you requested. Thank you, Emmy. I apologize for the trouble, but this may bring us a step closer in our investigation. I also brought you a surprise. Oh no! Well, if it isn't old Layton of the Gresson Heller! Inspector Grosky of the Yard. So you're the one who's been helping. <laughs> Not very sporting to keep that a secret to me. My, I don't know what you're talking about, Inspector. So you were in Scotland Yard connection, eh? What a small world. I thought our investigation would have jogged the professor's memory at some point. What was that, Emmy? Hmm, what? Nothing. I was just... Is that a new hat, professor? No, Emmy. No, it isn't. 
I'm a dash rake, and wait, I hear there's some sort of giant specter menacing this town. Ah, uh, yes, it is quite a situation. It sounds like Emmy has briefed you on some of the particulars, but allow me to fill in the details. The specter has destroyed parts of town with every appearance. Someone is pulling the strings on this specter. However, I'm not yet certain who. A specter? Conspiracy? It shall not stand. I cross key the yard to help you in your investigation. I shall go to the Miss Tallery Police Chief and demand full cooperation. <laughs> Hold on, Inspector, I haven't told you everything yet. Ah, and there he goes. Quite the excitable gentleman. 